While films like Insidious, The Conjuring, and Their Ilk have become a bit passé as their sequels keep churning out, 32 Malasana Street takes a lot of the haunted house tropes and makes them fresh, new, and most importantly, scary. Let's get down with Los Spookies. Welcome back to M.L. Miller Frights, a part of the Kings of Horror Network. I'm M.L. Miller. While you might be watching this video on the Kings of Horror Network, I urge you to click over to my M.L. Miller Frights page and give it a like, share with your buddies across the electronic superhighway, click subscribe to this channel, and don't forget to ring that bell for notifications. Please get the word out to new folks so we can make the Kings of Horror Network, as well as M.L. Miller Frights, bigger and better. Be on the lookout for a new Kickstarter campaign for an anthology I participated in called Nightmare Theater. This is a collection of short horror stories made by a whole gaggle of talented souls. The project is being helmed by David Schrader and Clay Adams. I paired up with my pirouette artist extraordinaire, Carlos Granda, for a morbidly fun morality tale to filmgoers who dare break the rules of common courtesy in the wrong theater. If you're interested in fun, scary, and gory horror, please support the Nightmare Theater Kickstarter campaign. Look below for the link. 32 Malasagna Street, aka Malasagna 32, is streaming exclusively on Shudder. It's directed by Albert Pinto and written by Ramon Campos, Gemma R. Niera, David Orea, and Salvador S. Molina. The setting is 1976 Spain, and the Olmedo family moves into the titular apartment, which has been unoccupied for quite some time. The family situation is a complex one. Manolo, played by Ivan Marcos, married Candela, played by Bia Segura, who was married to Manolo's brother first before having an affair with Manolo and eventually marrying him. This scandal forced the family out of their small village and into the city for a new start, away from all of the gossip. Candela has two children from her previous marriage, who are not thrilled from their move from the countryside into the city. Pepe, played by Sergio Castellanos, a shy boy who keeps to himself in his room, and Amparo, Begonia Vargas, a sprightly young woman who dreams of leaving home and becoming an airline stewardess. Manolo and Candela have one child of their own, a bespeckled and wide-eyed Rafi, played by Ivan Renedo. And rounding out the family is Candela's elderly father, Furman, José Luis de Madariagla, who is senile and barely present, and seems to see things that the rest of the family don't. This grand familial tapestry might seem extraneous, but it all factors into this tale of a family moving to the city into a large apartment that houses dark secrets and the ghost of a vengeful spirit, played by go-to lanky person Javier Botet. 32 Malasana Street is a complex tale, but it always remembers that it's a ghost story and delivers a solid stream of scary moments, terrifying builds of tension, and original horror sequences that feel unlike anything we've seen before. While Blumhouse seems to have cornered the market on haunted house tales, 32 Malasana Street still feels like a fresh and terrifying ghost story. Director Albert Pinto lets you get to know this incredibly tragic family and follows them through this arduous situation. But what really stands out is how each member of the family has their own story and their own peril to conquer. There's a fantastic variety of chills that this family go up against, and each one of those scares gives the family a twisted challenge to face against the possessed abode. The family has some extremely strong characters, and the actors are up to the job of portraying them. The biggest standout is Begonia Vargas as Amparo, who has an extremely complex and tragic role here. She's torn between her responsibilities toward her family and her dreams of leaving the home and starting a life of her own. But there's also something much darker going on, which we'll get to in a bit, and she pretty much is the main conflict of the entire film. Vargas handles this responsibility really well for a young actress. Other standouts are Bia Segura's beleaguered mother, Candela, who has to work full-time and also be a mother to the entire family. The overly protective, paranoid, and somewhat suspect role of Ivan Marcos as Manolo, 
and the adorable Ivan Renedo, who plays young Rappi and feels like the Spanish equivalent of the haunting of Hill House's thick glasses wearing Julian Hilliard and offers up a few cute but poignant beats himself. If there's a weak spot, it's Sergio Castellanos's Pepe, who seems to be going through his own struggles on another plane than his family, as he seems to be in another home altogether, despite being under the same roof. Add in a Spanish version of Lin Shay and a mystic gal in a wheelchair, and the film packs quite an acting punch. Javier Botet offers up a more rounded-out monster role here as he plays both the realtor who shows the Almedos their new home, as well as the ghostly monster that haunts the apartment. Usually, filmmakers seem to rely on simply having Botet shamble towards the camera, but Pinto actually has him do some creepy things and is able to frame the unique-looking actor in situations that really do amp up the horrifying aspects of his poses. I've given Botet some gruff in previous reviews, as it seems the actor is simply playing the same monster in all of the movies he stars in since he's made his debut in Wreck. But here, Botet expands his repertoire with some twisted poses, uncanny movements, and downright terrifying scare sequences. It's also great seeing the actor's face for a change in an early cameo as the realtor that you might miss if you're not looking for him. I'd be remiss not to talk about some of the more controversial bits of 32 Malasana Street. Part of me wants to give the film a pass because holding the Spanish culture against the incendiary American political culture isn't really fair. What isn't woke in America is perfectly fine in other countries, and also in this time the film was set, 1976. The film has a late-in-the-game reveal that gives motivation to the angry ghost and how this person was rejected by her family and society because of the way this person was feeling inside. This kind of bigotry is tough to sit through, but it was part of the time and culture, so I think it's a bold move not to wokenize it for modern release. There's also a running plot point concerning Amparo's possible pregnancy that seems to come to light in the final moments. This makes less sense the more you think about the way these characters were portrayed throughout the film, and really doesn't feel like the reveal of who the father is works in terms of the breadcrumbs left through the story. I'd rather they have left this part out than only hint at it in the final moments. It all feels wrapped up and addressed in a very quick and unsatisfying manner. That said, 32 Malasana Street is a roller coaster ride of twists, upendings, nail chomping tension, and spine rattling scares. You can see the influences from Insidious, The Conjuring, Poltergeist, The Amityville Horror and its sequels, and other iconic haunted house films, but it still feels like you're watching something new. It's much more potent than the usual haunted house fare we get in mainstream horror, and while it makes some questionable decisions in the final act, the film as a whole delivers a shockingly good time. That'll be it for today. Please chime in in the comments and let me know what you think of this video, how on the nose or mind-numbingly wrong I am, or you can counter with your own review. If you like this video, please pound that thumbs up button. Share this video with your social media addicted pals. If you're looking for written reviews, you can find them on mlmillerwrites.com. Don't forget, I have two new horror comic book trade paperbacks you should look for. Grave Trancers is out right now. And Pirouette, collecting never-before-published issues, will be out in November 18th in only the finest of comic book stores. And be sure to subscribe to this channel and ring that bell for alerts to be the first to see my future videos. Thank you so much for your time, and take care. Stuck inside